Hello and welcome to Southern Q. My name is Jim Johnson. I'm a KCBS pitmaster and international cooking instructor. I've won 78 grand championships on the barbecue circuit. I may not be a chef, but I'm a master of open fire cooking. I travel all over the world teaching people how to cook barbecue. And now I'm going to teach you at home. I may not be able to make you a world renowned pit master, but trust me, I'm going to make you better than your neighbor. And today what we're going to make is a wonderful meal. It's going to start out with a braided tenderloin. Who's heard of that? It's pretty strange, but stick around. We're going to do a braided tenderloin. And what are we going to do? We're going to pair that with a Memphis style sweet and savory baked bean. We're going to take those baked beans just a notch above and we're going to turn that into a barbecued baked bean parfait. Never heard of that before? You're going to have a hard time deciding whether that's an appetizer or dessert. But trust me, it's going to be better than your neighbors and you're going to love it. So please stick around. We're going to do this. We're going to have a few tricks and tips along the way. So we're going to get started. So let's fire up the grills and get smoking. Today we're going to make a Memphis style sweet and savory baked bean. How are we going to do that? We're going to start out with some beans. We've got some beautiful beans here. We're going to put some in and you can see we're going to load this pan up with flavor. You're going to be amazed how much we're going to be able to put in one pan. It's amazing how much you can do. We're going to start out with some baked beans. We're going to start out with a little bit of ketchup. We're going to come back in with some barbecue sauce. This is a very simple, very easy recipe. It's better than your neighbors, I'm trust me. And our website and get all the ingredients, all the proportions. You'll be able to do this at home. And trust me, this is the first thing you're going to check out when you do. A little brown sugar because we want to add some depth to our flavors. Now we've got our dry rub. We used a Memphis style sweet and savory dry rub and we did that so that we can get same dry rub you got the recipe for. It's going to also work well on the pork. We're going to do that with this. Now we're going to come back and we're going to add yellow peppers. So we take that, dice that up really nice and cute. We take some caramelized onions and what we do is we saute these just a little bit to soften them up so that when we put them in we don't get that crunch with the flavors. We don't want crunch, we want flavor. We're going to come back and add some hamburger meat. How about this? This is a ton of hamburger meat. And look at the mess I just made. But don't worry about the mess. This is outdoor cooking. And we want messes. The messier it is, the better it tastes. We got a little chorizo sausage. We're going to come back and add some chorizo to it. But here's going to be the key. If it gets a little thick, we're going to add just a little bit of apple juice. That will soften that up. The key to this recipe is going to be this. This is Memphis style pork shoulder. And why did I say that is because I cooked a huge pork shoulder over the weekend and I got leftovers. I fed all my neighbors, I impressed the neighborhood, I impressed everybody that showed up. But here's what's going to happen. We're going to take the leftovers and what are we going to do? We're going to take that leftover pulled pork and we're going to shred it up. You see how shredded this is? Still has a ton of flavor because we smoked it for nine hours. We seasoned it with our sweet and savory sauce and then we're going to put that on and we got that really nice and you can just smell it. You can smell the smokiness of this. We're going to take this and now the key to your baked beans is, you notice I added all my ingredients first. The key to it is, is turning it over one time. Because if you add ingredients and you stir every time, your beans are going to be soft and mushy before you ever put them on the smoker. So what I want you to do is, is I want you to just put them in there, put all the ingredients in, and then what we're going to do is, is we're just going to gently, gently fold this in. It's outdoor cooking. We're not normally not so gentle, but today we've got to be gentle. Now what I'm going to do now is, is because I have room on the grill, I'm going to open up my lid. We're going to bring this over to the grill. Settle that down. This is a pan full of flavor. We're going to transfer this to the grill and why are we going to the smoker? Because what we're going to do is we're going to put this on so that we get this wonderful smoke flavor. We want that pass through. We're going to put that smokiness into this. Now what's happened is, as I put that on and I look at my grill and I say, wow, I have a lot of room left. 
So I need to go in, find something else I can cook, and then what I'm going to do is come back out and prepare something because I hate wasted space on a grill. I love smoking, so I want to put something else on there. So we're going to get started on our braided tenderloin, and we're going to put that on, put a nice sweet smell to it, and then I'll come back and tell you a little bit about the temperatures we use. Use back in just a second. Today what we're going to do is, is a braided pork loin. Never heard of that before, but you've heard it first here. What I want to do is, is we're going to take a pork loin, very lean piece of meat. And when I look for a loin, I look for the marbling in this. You see these little bitty white speck lines that run through and through the red meat? That is a little fat content through there. The marbling is where the moisture is going to be and the flavor. So I, the more marbling I can find in a lean piece of meat, the better it's going to taste. So we're going to start about an inch and a half from the top. I'm going to come down and I'm going to just make a cut. Very simple. I'm going to do it again over here. I'm going to make two cuts on this. Guess what? We've got this thing looking good already. So then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take those two cuts that I just made, roll them up on the side, and then we're going to do this. See how we've got this? You know, look at this beautiful marbling, beautiful piece of meat. So what I'm going to do is, is I'm going to come back down one more time, inch and a half below, we're going to cut down. And what you do is you hold the meat and pull your knife through it. So as you do, it'll separate cleanly, make a nice cut. And if it doesn't, just come back and touch it up. So we got that. Now what's going to happen is, is why do we do this? Because the loin is a huge piece of meat. Very nice, very good flavor profiles but it's a lot of meat. As thick as it is, it takes a while to cook through. So guess what we're going to do? We're going to be able to do two things. We're going to be able to cook this faster. I'm going to turn this up on the side, work my knife down through it. Beautiful. So what's going to happen is, is we've got all these little tentacles. And I always tell people, to, hey, look, you want this to look kind of like an octopus with all the different tentacles? The reason being is now, as I've got all the little strips, we're going to use a rub because I can put it all the way through. Watch this little trick. Now today, what I'm using is, is two commercial rubs. We'll show you how to make dry rubs on this show, but I just want to show you that we're going to use two different types of rubs today. The reason we do this is, is because I want people to know you can go out and buy a commercial rub and still do, be a hero in your backyard. I don't want you to be afraid of that. But we're using two rubs, and why are we using two rubs? We're using two rubs because we're layering the flavors. This is going to be a sweet and spicy rub. This is going to be called sassy apple. This sassy apple is going to have that flavor profile that when you taste it, it's going to taste like a Granny Smith apple. What's better with pork than Granny Smith apples? Nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to add this to it. We're going to turn this over. We're going to come back and coat this again. Now what's going to happen is the flavor is going to go through and through. We're going to get it all through the tentacles and then be able to get the temperature exact right in the middle because the outside is going to be more done than the inside when you do the big pork roast. So what we want to do is, is we want to do it just like this. We're going to roll this over. We're going to get all this good dry rub off this board, so don't be afraid of making a mess. But remember, this is smoking outdoors, and we don't mind making messes. So the bigger the mess, the more fun we've had, the way we look at it. So I want to take this, and then we're going to come back, and here's the beauty of it. This is where your neighbors need to be here. So we're going to take these two, two strands right here, and we're just going to do this. Cute already, isn't it? So what's going to happen? How many people have ever seen this happen before? So I want you to sit and take good notes, look at this real close and say, wow, that is fabulous. We're going to do it this way. We're going to roll this up. Now, where I've missed a spot, guess what? I come back, add just a little bit of my dry rub because what are we doing? We're layering flavors. We want a flavor profile that's going to hit every note. If you remind yourself and everything, the tip of your tongue is going to have the fruit and savory flavor, so you're going to have that sweet and sour. You're going to have that flavor hit your tongue first. And then all of a sudden, we're going to have this candy apple that's going to go right across the top of your tongue. You're going to have that flavor. And with a little bit of heat in here, because we're using sweet and uh, sassy, 
what's going to happen is in the back of your throat, you're going to have that little bit of heat. What we have now is, is we've taken this, we've seasoned it up, we've got to go to the grill with this. Look at this beautiful marbling, beautiful piece of meat. What happens? We have a little more room on the grill. We're going to take this over and we're going to set this right on the grill. We're going to twist that back up and we're going to cook this for about an hour and a half. This is going to be a beautiful cooked piece of meat. So we're going to have that to pair with our baked beans. What a wonderful meal we're going to have. Come back in just a little bit and we're going to give you a wonderful meal. We've got the smoke rolling, the temperature set, we're ready to smoke. It's been two hours since we made our fabulous beans out of leftovers. So we got those on the smoker. Now it's time for us to go to the smoker and see what our product looks like. We want to find out if it's finished or not. So what we're going to do is we're going to step over to our smoker. Oh, isn't this wonderful? I can tell by looking that these beans are ready. They're going to be a little warm on the side, so don't do this at home. But I'm going to show you a little trick here. If you grab the edge, you can bring this right over. We're going to bring this over. Oh, look at this. Isn't this wonderful? Beautiful beans. We've had our pork loin on for about an hour, so we're going to let that sleep a little bit, soak up some more smoke, and we're going to concentrate on these beans right now. What we've done is, is we said we were going to make some Memphis-style sweet and savory baked beans. This is sweet and sa savory baked beans Memphis-style. But how are we going to make it better? We're going to take a little trick here. Call your neighbors, get them to come over, because you're not going to believe what they see. We're going to put just a little bit of coleslaw in the glass. What is that going to do? We're going to add that little crunch, that little bit of flavor. Then what we're going to do is we're going to come back and we're going to give this a stir. Look at this. You see that color? Isn't that beautiful? And you'll smell that deep, rich smokiness coming out of there. And look, not one bite that doesn't have meat in it. What do we have in it? Chorizo sausage, hamburger meat, pulled pork, all the vegetables. So now what we're going to do is we're going to come in and plate this up. This is going to drive your neighbors nuts, but that's what we're here for. So let's put this in. We're going to top this off. Then this is absolutely a work of beauty, but it's a little bit plain. I've got a secret for this. I think we can do something special, and I'm going to come and show you how we're going to kick this up one more notch. This is a pink Himalayan salt block. Today we're going to cook shrimp on that. We're going to bring the temperature up. We want this at about 500 degrees. We'd like that salt block to be at about 425 degrees across the surface. So at home, please be careful. This is very, very hot. Be, be safe. Be careful. What we're going to do is, is we're going to go grab the shrimp, going to come back, put it on a salt block, and I'm going to show you how to make this the best shrimp your neighbor has ever seen. Today what we're going to do is, is we're going to grill these wonderful shrimp on the pink Himalayan salt block. But first, let me talk a little bit about the shrimp. What we've gotten today is, is we've gotten the 26 to 30 count. When you see that on a bag, what that tells you is, is that's how many it takes to make one pound. So when you see a 26 to 30, there's going to be 26 to 30 shrimp that make up one pound. So when you see a number on the bag, that's what it refers to. Now today what we've done is, is we started out with a shrimp that's going to be peeled and deveined. You'll notice because we have the cut in the side of the, the uh, shrimp. And by having that cut made, you'll see a little black line in there. That's their intestine, so you want those taken out. That's not a very good shrimp. So make sure you get peeled and deveined. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to go over to our pink Himalayan salt block and we're going to grill these bad boys up. There's going to be, it's not going to be but just a minute. We're going to go over. We've got our fire up. Remember I wanted the surface on my smoker at about 425 degrees. Now what we're going to do is, is we're going to take these over. I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm going to do this with my finger. You can hear that fire sizzling down there. So be very careful at home. But the minute I start putting these on, you'll see them. They'll just start sizzling and they'll start turning. Now you'll notice that they're white, more white and more gray. The minute they start turning pink is the, when we're going to know they're done. How do we know that? Because they will turn pink just very, very quickly. What's going to happen 
the sooner I get these on, the quicker this is going to happen. Let me set this plate out of the way. I start with a fresh plate. You can see down here that this tail's already starting to turn pink. This is not going to take long, folks. This is about a two minute process minimum. But we don't want to overcook our shrimp because it's very rubbery. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to immediately flip this over. Look how pink that is. This is going to turn pink right off the top. Look at that. Beautiful, beautiful pink color. The hotter the block, the less salt it's going to transfer. If it's real cold, you'll, you'll cook something on there and then you'll get this salty flavor, a little bit too salty. That's because your salt block was way too cold. So make sure it's hot as you can get it and then you're going to put this on. You see our shrimp already turning pink. Doesn't take long. Beautiful, beautiful colors. So we're going to flip this over as we go. We got some beautiful shrimp right here. Now what's going to happen is, is I'm going to start taking these off. And you can just see the color, how it transformed. Beautiful, beautiful color. You can smell it. You can see it. So we like to cook over a hot heat for this. This is grilling. We like to do a lot of low and slow cooking, but we like to crank it up and do it hot and fast. So when we do, we got some beautiful shrimp. We're going to take this off. We're going to go back. Take a look at this. Isn't this a beautiful shrimp? gorgeous looking plate. So what we're going to do is, is we're going to wrap this up real quick. We're going to get our stuff out and we're going to come back and separate and make this our bean parfait. Okay folks, what we did is we took the shrimp, cooked it on the Himalayan pink salt block and now what we've done is, is we got this beautiful red pink shrimp. It's ready to go. What are we going to do? We're going to make these fabulous Memphis style sweet and savory baked beans even better. We're going to make your neighbor jealous at this point in time. So what we're going to do is, is all we're going to do is, is we've taken these shrimp, we're going to put them on just like this. What a thing of beauty this turned out to be. Savory style Memphis baked beans along with grilled shrimp on a pink Himalayan salt block. Now I've showed you how to be better than your neighbor. onions. I love onions. What am I going to do with this onion, you ask? I'm going to cut it in half. I'm not going to peel it. Put it on a cutting board. We're going to take this half. No, no peel off. I'm going to put a little salt on it. Why did I do that? Can't wait to find out, can you? We're going to go to our grill. I've got it fired up. You can see the smoke rolling, heat there. Look at all the dirt. Somebody didn't clean my grill the last time. My wife. She never does anything right like that, does she? She didn't clean up after herself. She likes to cook, but she didn't clean up. So we're going to clean up her mess. How are we going to do that? We're going to take this onion, put that salt on it, and look at this. Can you see that juice running out? Look at the juice coming out. What does that do? I just cleaned my grill, but what happened? It left that little bit of onion juice on my grill. So when I grill my steak, guess what's going to happen? I get that little extra bit of flavor that my neighbor doesn't have. Now I want to go one step further, because what are you going to do with a dirty onion? You're going to do this. Oh, got a fire here. Guess what? Everybody in the neighborhood is going to smell this in about 30 seconds. So this is going to have enough moisture in it. What it does is it's going to start smoking, and it's going to add that extra layer of flavor to any meat that I cook. So anybody that's out there cooking with hardwoods and charcoals, this adds another bit of flavor. So use this. Use that trick. Use the tips. Learn to keep that blue smoke rolling. It's been an hour and a half. We've got our pork loin. We're going to go check it out. So let's step over to the grill, take a look at what we've got. This is that braided pork loin we were talking about. How gorgeous is this? So here, let's take this off. We're going to have to take this off. Be very careful at home, folks. Very, very hot. We're going to take this, bring it over to our cutting board. Look at this gorgeous piece of meat. We've taken a whole pork loin, seasoned it up, we braided it, put it on there, smoked it for about an hour and a half so we have a nice smoky flavor, and we layered it with two sauces. So what we're going to do now is, is we need to add a layer of flavor. So we're going to take our brush, and at the very end, just put a little sauce over this. Now, see the colors? Isn't this a beautiful color? Beautiful, rich color. If you could only smell what we have here. So we're going to put a little on because what are we going to do? We never put our sauce on during the cooking process. 
because it will blacken over an open flame. As we do this, we're adding a nice glaze to it. So we're going to do this finishing sauce because what we want is, is the flavor on the outside as well as we do on the inside. I'm going to take this, and what's going to make this better is the fact that I'm going to cut this right now on live TV. Let's take this, and we're just going to cut right through here. I want to show you something. Let's turn this around so you can see this at home. Look how beautiful that is. I told you I was going to teach you to be better than your neighbors. We're going to invite you over. We're going to show you how to do something like this, and this is going to knock their socks off. See that beautiful smoke ring? It's done. We've got moisture in it, so it's not over dry. This is going to be fantastic. Okay, let's just recap what we did on today's show. First thing we did is we took some leftover pork that we had from the last weekend that we wanted to do something with. So what did we do? We made Memphis style sweet and savory beans. This is loaded with flavors, loaded with ingredients. It's the best beans you ever had. But I told you at the beginning of the show I was gonna be better than your neighbor. How are we gonna do that? We took some pink shrimp, put it on the Himalayan salt block, grilled it off, added that as a garnish, that amped it up quite a bit. Now we've taken a pork loin, we stripped it down, braided it up, seasoned it up so that why? So that we could get flavor all through, cook it so it'd be good and moist, and then we put it on the smoker for an hour and a half. This is what it looks like as a finished product. This, folks, is a wonderful meal right here, and it's all an inspiration because we cooked it on the smoker. So until next time, keep the blue smoke rolling. All right, now what I want you to do is race right over to your neighbors, let them know you got the grill going, and to come over and get the best smoked meat they've ever had in their life. Now, I'm in a hurry. See you later. <laughs> I'm going out that side. I don't know how you get out of some of this now. <laughs> You notice why they don't have fat people in NASCAR? They don't make the windows big enough.